it's just a much more mature market in every way. You could kind of just know five or 10 firms as like the, the best firms 10 years ago. And most people would agree on them. Now, I think you really, based on what area you're in, what you would consider the best firms is so different. If you're in defense or you're in crypto or you're in fintech, there's so many smart specialists and also firms that have dedicated funds that I think the game is much more complicated. And I think having your expertise or like being considered the best in a certain area just means something really different now. It's not like you can just go to Sequoia Benchmark, Excel, Index, whatever, and be like, okay, I'm done. Like those are the best firms. And I think that's also driving people to try to be leaders in different ways. We didn't have VC podcasts like this 10 years ago. If I were an emerging manager like my wife, or maybe you would consider yourself one, I don't know. But like, of course, I would want to be out there talking to my community, showing me what I think about. Because founders have a lot of options if, if they're a hot company and they want to see that you really care about the space, that you know what you're talking about, that you do the homework. And so that's just really different. There was an interesting study done of the Midas list that found that only seven of the 100 tweet regularly, like close to daily. That's maybe partly because Twitter isn't what it used to be, slash, sorry, it's X now. But I think it's also that when those people became top investors, being a public brand on social media was not really as important. I think 20 years from now, most of the top investors on the Midas list would have some sort of podcast or blog series or video series. They'd be out there with their community for sure.